So now that all the pieces are disassembled, let's go ahead and start uh, reassembling them again. Let's start with the trigger. So again, to put the trigger back, here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of angle it and wiggle it to where it's kind of now locked on here. If you take it from the side and kind of angle it just like that, it should snap on nicely. Now we're going to bend the spring so that it matches up with the little peg inside of the trigger. When you have it correctly assembled, or the spring anyway, the spring should be curved like so. If it straightens out, that means it's not in the correct location. All you have to do now is push forward on the trigger slightly and it should kind of snap into place like so. Now to reconnect the long white piece to the trigger we're going to take a small screwdriver stick it in this kind of little arc here if it'll cooperate. There we go. And now you'll notice that it's underneath the little white piece. Now we're going to push up on the screwdriver so that the white piece rises as we push away on the 360 trigger. And there you go. Now the white piece is reconnected to the trigger. I apologize if that was kind of difficult to see due to the quality of my camera. But again, the triggers are the part, in my opinion, that I think you shouldn't remove. There's just a very likely chance that you'll break it. Um, and really, there's no reason to. If you want to exchange your triggers, just exchange the entire chipboard. It's safer that way. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and continue reassembling the controller. Let's go ahead and put the joysticks back on. Like that. Now, you'll notice the joysticks have like a little um, part that's longer. That's how it fits into the peg. If, it's, if you're having trouble getting it into the peg, just kind of twist it back and forth until it just kind of aligns itself on its own. And if you want to, you can move them around to make sure they work. There you go. Now, if you're doing PlayStation 2 controllers, or if you're doing Xbox, or uh, sorry, uh, if you're doing PlayStation 2 controllers or PlayStation 3 controllers, um, I would recommend assembling them in a different order, but if you're just doing your regular Xbox, go ahead and snap those bad boys on. Now let's go ahead and reconnect the rumbles. All we have to do is just push down. There's only one way the rumble thing can really go in, so make sure you have it facing the right way before you press down. And it should just kind of slide into its place. And there you go. Once you have all that assembled, you can kind of put that off to the side. Let's go ahead and reassemble the Xbox controller, like all the casing and stuff that goes with it. So, let's start with the front side and put that downwards. Let's start with the D-pad. So let's go ahead and get the actual part that you push with your finger and the second part. We're going to put that part underneath and this part on top. And you're going to align this top tab and the side tab with the top indention and side indention right there. Then you can flip it over and align the actual D-pad buttons right there. Now again, they're not connected, so be, be careful. If you have the little clippies on the side, they will be connected, but either way, you just need to be careful. So now that we have that, we're just going to screw them in using our screwdriver. It's important on this step to be careful to not over screw or over tension, but do not under tension as well. You need to get it to where it's taut and not loose, but don't overdo it. And again, I would definitely recommend using a thicker screwdriver to avoid stripping the screw. So now we have the screws reassembled. It has a little bit of wiggle, but not too much wiggle. Um, you should be able to look all the way down and see if it's um, pressing the bottom. It's pretty easy to tell if it's not all the way in. If it's not, just give it a couple more turns just to be sure. All right. So now that the D-pad is reconnected, we're going to take this little squishy part here 
and reapply it. You can ignore that. I'll go over that in another video. So there we go. All we have to do is push down in that little tab and it kind of sinks into place. Now let's go ahead and attach the buttons now. So let's take the back button and the start button and the forward button. Or yeah, the back button and the start button. Now these buttons are identical, so it doesn't matter which way they go. They will only go in one way. So if you swap them, it's okay, but they're not going to end up facing the wrong way. So don't worry about that. And again, these will fit within the casing. The casing has little notches in it to make sure that it only goes in one way. Let's take the little clear part of the Xbox button, apply that, and again, it only goes in one way. Now I'll take the actual Xbox button and slide it into place. And you can tell with the Xbox button that it has a little notch on the bottom and a thicker notch on the top, and that's how it goes in. Now the B button and the A button and the X button the A button and the Y button, so B, A, X, Y. All these buttons have unique um, casings and unique little tabs on the actual buttons. So you, even if you want to mess them up, you can't. Um, there's only one way that they'll go in, and they'll only go into one particular case. So you don't have to worry about messing those up as long as they fit in nicely, like so. You're good to go. So let's go ahead and apply the little rubberized part. Now that is a very important part. If you're assembling the controller, do not forget that part. I've done that once or twice. Um, and for one, it, it doesn't work without it. And for two, it feels very odd. Um, so there we go. Now the next part we need to do is the top and the bottom. So let's take the triggers and this little piece right here that has the, um, the wireless connection and just kind of press those together like so. You'll notice that it has two little tabs right there and there's two little holes right here which you're going to press down and they should align with each other just like so. Now that it's one big long strip line them up and put it in on these two little pegs and the little uh, opening should be facing towards you not away from you and it will only fit that way but just in case make sure the little opening is facing towards you. So now we're going to apply this piece right here um, it's just going to fit nicely on top of the various pegs that are designed within the casing. This one can be a little bit tricky if you reassemble it, so make sure it's really stuck in there the way it should be. Um, it might not look awesome when you finalize it, although it'll work. So just to make sure it looks nice, make sure you get it just nice in there, as tight as you possibly can. Just push down, make sure it's nice and firm. And again, the opening should be facing towards you. Although it'll only go in one way, it's just nice to know that the case, the opening right there should be facing towards you. Now we're going to insert the chipboard. So take the chipboard and the joysticks. Now, if you're using a PlayStation 3 joystick, here's what you're going to do, or a PS2 joystick. Take the joysticks before you assemble them, and you're going to put them in the little uh, holes where they go. The reason for that is because the at least for the PlayStation 2 ones, they're a little bit thicker, and so they're difficult to do if they're already attached to the chipboard. So go ahead and attach them before applying them to the chipboard. But if they're just your regular Xbox ones, you don't have to do that. So now we're going to insert the chipboard. There we go. Now the chipboard's easy to align because one, the joysticks need to be aligned, and two, there's a center hole there and two holes here. Use those to align your chipboard. Press down on the chipboard and make sure it's firmly in place. Then take the rumble packs and slide them into these little casings right here. It's important to make sure that the cables on the rumble packs don't accidentally sit on top of this hole. There's a common problem that the rumble packs will look like this and it's on top of the hole. Make sure it's not like that. Kind of rotate it around to where it points towards the inside to be safe. Just like that. All we have to do now is reapply the top casing. So again, we're going to do it reverse. So we're going to put the top on first. And what we're going to do as we slide the bottom down is push up on the two springs here, just slightly. And it will close. So now before applying the screws, go back, turn around, make sure all of the joysticks work, all the buttons work.
everything works properly. Good. So now what we're going to do is simply put the screws back. But don't over tighten. I've had problems in my, with my Xbox 360 controllers in the past because of over tightening. For whatever reason they don't respond when you over tighten them. So make sure they're taut but not over tightened. So there we go. Go ahead and push all the buttons one more time to make sure they all work. And that's how you do it. So that's how you disassemble and assemble your Xbox 360 controller. I hope this video helped. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to post a comment below. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.